Hi babies and welcome back to Monday's episode. On this week's episode, we are going to talk about a booty hole play but more specifically, a rim job. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you what a rim job is and I'm gonna tell you how to be comfortable giving and receiving one. But first, if you are new here, welcome. I'm Miranda, pleasure baby. And every single Monday at 8 p.m. Central Time is when I bring to you the taboo topic of the week. So I know we're all eager to dive into this week's episode. Now, if you haven't done so already, what are you waiting for? Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you never, ever, ever miss an episode. All right, now let's get started into what you came here for, and that is for the rim job. So to start things off, we are going to talk about the street terms. We are going to be eating booty, eating groceries having some anal linguists. There will be punching the fart box with our tongue. There will be licking and of course, there will be rimming. And that is what rim job lingo street talk is all about. Now, I mean, I don't know about you, but like, Punching the fart box is probably my favorite one to say because it is so crude and so aggressive. And if you know me and you have watched my other videos, you will know that that is me to a T. Not the farting part, but the aggressiveness. <laughs> So what exactly does a rim job involve? It involves licking, sucking, teasing, kissing, sometimes even penetration with your tongue, AKA that's where you get the saying, tongue punch in the fart box. So to sum it all up, what rimming is, is externally stimulating the anus. Now, just because you are doing a rim job does not mean that this is the go-to right before you do anal penetration with penis, dildo, butt plug, whatever it might be. There is no penetration that actually needs to happen. In fact, rimming can just be a foreplay or just a pleasurable experience on its own. There doesn't have to be any end goal other than just to receive those tingles and those pleasurable moments because let's be honest, your anus is like the golden ticket for some of us. Having that stimulated is on a, another level, especially if you're getting two to three to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, different types of stimulation all occurring at once. It can be what some of us like to call as orgasmic, shall we say? So now that we covered what exactly we are going to be talking about in this video and what rimming actually means to do slash receive, however you want to look at it, let's talk about how to make you comfortable for giving and how to make you comfortable on the receiving end of things. Because after all, we want to make both parties or multiple parties comfortable. First things first, we are going to clean your brown star, yes, your booty hole or your sphincter, your anus. We are going to get her, she, him, they, them all buttered up, squeaky clean. Although anal douching isn't 100% necessary for the rim job, especially if you are just going to be staying external, I always do recommend it because it almost allows you to feel more comfortable in your body as the person receiving, as well as it makes it a little bit more enjoyable and less worrisome from the person giving. Because obviously, the more relaxed you are, the more you are going to be able to dial in on those sensations and fully let go and just embrace it and enjoy it. Because let's face it, there's usually a taste, a smell, there's some type of bacteria and our booty hole sweat. So I mean, during its day job that it does, you know, like probably in the morning or maybe even midday or every time after you eat, um, we need to just make sure it's clean. It is clean, it's nice and fresh because it's not normally Fresh. So let's freshen it up so that you can take a seat, relax, and enjoy the ride. So number two, you are going to stand up, turn your butt around, and you're going to spread those cheeks in front of a mirror, and you're going to take a long, hard look at your star, okay? At your booty hole, at your sphincter, and you're going to examine it to make sure that there is absolutely no hair there. And I'm telling you right now, you are going to be surprised because you're going to be like, hmm. Didn't think that my booty hole would have hair on it, especially if you're a vulva owner. 
but you will know that you do especially if you go get a brazilian because they will always sugar or always wax that area and if you haven't started shaving there yet maybe now's the time for you to do so now i'm never one to recommend all what you should do with your body hair because that is your own choice so make the decision however you want to but i am gonna let you know for this rim job a booty hole play of any sorts it's not gonna be fun when you have a curly twisted hair on the back of your tongue and you're like and you can't get it off and I mean I don't want a hair stuck in between my teeth as the giver and I don't want it to be plucked out as the receiver either so I mean take that however you will if you want to rock the booty hole hair go for it but it's just one of my tips and my recommendations to you to just remove that hair you can leave all your other hair just kind of clean up around the area I don't know. I think for a lot of penis owners, they call it manscaping, but we can call it penis scaping so that we are inclusive. Next up is number three. Now we season our chicken breast, we season our beef, we season our, I don't know, fish, eggplants, if you will. You just season your food. You put sauces, you put spices, you get it all nice and tasty. So what are we gonna do with that booty hole? Yes, that meaty, meaty, meaty sphincter. We are going to place some lubricant on it. One, it's gonna let your tongue slide, kiss, everything is gonna have just a better glide in general. But, 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 we can use a flavored lube. So yeah, you can have it tasting like chocolate covered strawberries. You can have it like a mint mojito or maybe salted caramel. Ooh, ah, there are tons and tons and tons of great flavored lubes out there. And this is just one of those awesome ways to use a flavored lube. And plus, I mean, if you are gonna get a little bit, you know, experimental and start, you know, tongue punching the fart box, it's going to taste real good and it's also going to let it slide in a little bit easier. Now, if you are planning on doing anal or any type of booty hole plug play or anything like that, you are going to need to switch to a silicone based lube, but that is in all of my other anal videos. So be sure to check those ones out too. Now, number four. All right. So with just sex in general, you never want to go from A to B directly, a straight line. You don't want to do that. Sex is about the ride to the destination. Your ride should kind of look like, and then boom. I mean, like nobody wants to go straight for the clit. Nobody wants to go straight for the dick. Nobody wants to go straight for the booty hole either okay let's enjoy the ride okay take a look at the scenery around us we are going to enjoy the neck we're going to enjoy the kissing the loving the touching massaging we are going to excite the mind and the body so don't forget about the inner thighs the labias the balls the gooch and the booty i mean that is your main course for tonight so grab those cheeks and show them some love use your teeth along the neck maybe you're even gonna suck or bite on the nipples either way you are stopping along the way making that destination oh, scream that much more because we are getting our mind and our body excited okay we are not doing the beeline that's not my style and that's not the way I want to teach you guys either. I want to teach you how to enjoy the journey. So number five, speaking of that journey and what we're going to do to get us there, obviously we are going to want to experiment along the way. We are going to play around. We're going to play around with our tongue shape, our textures, the firmness, the shapes, the movements, the rhythms, such as some people like a firm lick, a softer lick, something with a little bit more glide, more saliva, more lubrication, where others like the delicate tip of the tongue circling around the sphincter, because we are not going right for the target, remember. Now, if you and your partner have discussed a penetration and are wanting to take it to that next level, this is the time where you tongue punch that fart box. Okay, 
I need to I need to really stop saying that. I really hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Or it could be sitting there being like, stop Miranda, you were making me not want to do this. But pff, have a little humor in your life. I'm funny, laugh with me, and just don't don't be mean because I, I don't know if I can mentally handle that right now in these comments. So if you are going to be slipping your tongue in, you, you want to maintain in that like inch frame because this is not the case of the deeper you go the better because the deeper you go the less sensations that you will feel because there is going to be less nerve endings the nerve endings are around the outside and within that first little inch so to make it nice and simple a very shallow penetration is needed we are not scooping in the ice cream container mm -hmm. <laughs> so now that we've made it to number six, this video would be nothing without us talking about our hands because who doesn't like dual stimulation? If you are rimming and pleasing and teasing more than two erogenous zones, that is going to take this cake to the top and hit it with a masterpiece. While your lips or your mouth or your tongue are busy, what are your hands doing other than plastered by your side? We are going to make use of them and we are going to be grabbing the butt cheeks, potentially the shaft or maybe massaging the labia or the clitoris. Man, Nina is just taking all the attention here. You guys probably didn't even hear anything that I said because she's walking around praying her little cat butt around. We are not talking about your booty hole. We're talking about human booty holes. Okay, Nina? Yeah. Now, if you can't reach your partner's other erogenous zones, play along with your partner. Get them to touch themselves in those areas so that you can just focus in on your task. I mean, but I like to be a multi-pleaser. So if possible, try to do the multi-layered erogenous zones. Number seven, it's time to talk about what position we are going to be in when we are giving or receiving. So let's start off with the most easiest one of them all and it's going to be the receiver on all fours that actually makes it super easy for you to access all of the other parts of the genitals or the erogenous zones with your hands now this might be a little bit too animalistic per se for some of us but it does tend to be the more easier one obviously you're not just gonna hop up on all fours look back and be like okay babe let's do this no there is the journey remember don't forget you're not just hopping in to these weird positions at least i hope not <laughs> another really good one is where you can have the person receiving on their belly and with a pillow propped up underneath their pelvis just to put their booty a little bit more on an angle now that leaves your hands to wander along the back side of them and not really able to touch the front and that doesn't allow the other person person to touch themselves either so that is just an option for a rimming but not really good for other places of attention that are also pleasurable another one for a vulva owner which is kind of like a go-to for most of us is a face sitting that allows you to touch yourself and have your partner touch and caress you in multiple areas and also 69 usually that leaves only one person able to access the booty hole however the other person is giving you pleasure at the same time so that can be pretty freaking dope too really at the end of the day you guys can experiment and figure out kind of what works best for both of you because when push comes to shove i'm not in the room with you and i'm not able to tell you what feels good for you so make sure you guys are communicating with each other <laughs> and as for number eight if you are are ready to ramp it up and take that exploring to a another level then let's do and talk about toys now there are different types of vibrators dildos butt plugs really there is a whole realm of anal sex toys that you can dive into those are just a few of the main ones oh my gosh I almost forgot anal beads those are really good for different types of textures and really increasing that sensation now just a little quick reminder reminder here that if you are going to be using a toy you get consent from your partner this isn't just one of these things that's like oh I just feel like doing this and trying this but pow that's not a good idea that is how you lose trust in your relationship and that is also just like not fucking cool it's, it's 2021 it wasn't okay a long long time ago and it's still not okay now but we are way 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 more educated on consent so that is just not acceptable okay always ask and 
if you aren't going to dabble into these toys, make sure you use their silicone-based lube, or they do have some really great water-based lubes that don't actually respond like a water-based lube, meaning they last longer, they're thicker, and they're specifically meant for butt stuff. Hold on, there's one more thing that I would like to add in, so I guess we will file this into number nine, but really, it should, we should call this zero actually because this is the most important thing of them all and it's consent, communication, and watching your partner's body language. So you always want to ask, I always recommend taking it nice and slow and easing into the whole process. You're not just going to be like, hey, I heard about rim jobs and I want to do a rim job on you. Let's do it tonight. No, we're going to take our time. We are going to have a conversation, not in the bedroom, not before the act. There's not going to be any pressure and we are going to go in with ease. Hell, if you don't even know how to bring it up or talk about it, you can show them this video and be like, does that sound interesting to you? Do you want to try it? If they say nope, that's fine. You can always come back and ask again a couple weeks later because that's something that I always do. Just dip your toes in and plant the seed and then maybe the seed will flower one day, but you don't know until you ask. As far as body language goes, you want to make sure that you are kind of keeping an ear open, an eye open, so you can see and read your partner's body language just like anything else in the bedroom. If they start pulling away or it starts hurting, they usually will let you know with their body or if they feel comfortable, they can vocalize that as well. But you won't know if you're just doing your thing and you're just focused in on your zone you have to be aware at all times and really there probably should be a safe word I mean I don't have one but I mean if this is something that is super super edgy for you guys then maybe a safe word would be good and don't forget to check in and ask them does this feel good or if they say no maybe what do you want me to do to you what do you think you will like or what do you think will feel good to you and if you guys have a conversation about this stuff beforehand it makes it Oh, excuse me. It makes it that much more easy to talk about while you are in the middle of the act. Now, every time I say communication, I really, really hope that people understand communication with moderation. So you're not constantly checking in on your partner. A lot of the time, I don't even necessarily vocalize checking in. I'm really good at reading people's energy and body language though. So I do feel if somebody isn't enjoying themselves, I will be able to feel that or sense that with my eyes, maybe with their body language. Um, but if you are not so in tune with that stuff, definitely, definitely, definitely you can check in by asking. But just, yeah, don't be asking every minute, every 30 seconds. That's a really good way to just kind of close that moment of sexiness. <laughs> All right, guys, and that brings us to the end of our video on analinguist or booty hole play or rim jobbing to be a precise. Now, I do hope this helps you guys out as well as kind of softens you into the groove of rim jobs. Now, I know there is tons of different steps here to take into consideration, but you can always come back and re-watch. Now, if you like this video, please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to my channel. All right, babies, I will see you next Monday.